Thank you very much for giving this opportunity to me to come here and talk to you. And uh, I should thank uh, Mr. Chen and all other organizers who made this uh, possible for me to come and talk to you about uh, Abu Wafa and some documents which are left in, uh, about geometric Islamic construction and so on. And uh, I should say that nothing is left for me to talk. Already Eric broke and then Jay Bonner finished everything that I wanted to talk. That is not fair. Okay, and, but anyway, I try my best. Should I wait for more people to come? Let me see if it works. Should I push what? Oh. Oh. Ah. This is right, right? This way? Okay. First, I should talk about myself. Everybody did. And my name is Reza Sarhangi. I'm uh, originally from Iran. I'm uh, from Khorasan. And that was what Jay Bonner mentioned, a lot of uh, images from Khorasan and talk about patterns. So I'm from that region. I'm, uh, actually, I'm right now a US citizen, so I'm called Iranian-American uh, person there. And uh, I was born and raised in Iran, in Khorasan. And the city that I was raised was Mashhad. Mashhad is one of those centers of many, many uh, uh, this is like exactly the same level, if not uh, a little bit higher than Isfahan in having many, many buildings of uh, tiles and uh, constructions and patterns. So, uh, in fact, uh, I was raised in this uh, city with many, many uh, uh, images and patterns in my mind when I was born. And then my major was mathematics. Uh, in high school and then in college, and then I continued, I pursued a PhD in mathematics. In fact, uh, very unrelated to what I'm doing today, I did mathematics of a certain system of, uh, uh, what, part of uh, mathematics, which is very, very difficult, very full of calculations. Uh, however, in my uh, mind, I was dealing with patterns and designs and then uh, uh, when actually I was established, I became a professor in one college in Kansas. And then I started uh, teach. Uh, this is my artwork. I started uh, producing artwork of my own. And actually also I do workshop going here, there. This is like what I did uh, with the uh, University of Rome students. I, I've been in Korea and many other places and uh, deal with... Uh, workshop patterns and designs with the students and yeah anyway so uh actually uh, when i was in kansas right now i'm in baltimore which is close to dc actually i started a conference which is called bridges mathematical connections in art music and science. Actually, uh, I started this conference in 1998, and uh, uh, then we gathered people from all over the world. In fact, some of the earliest people who joined this uh, movement are here. Carol Beer is one of the first uh, people who actually responded to this call to come to Kansas and start the you know, conference, conference, and Akio is here also. Where is Akio? You, you, know, you have seen the Japanese guy with many, many pieces of art of work here. And then I was lucky to have Jay Bonner, then uh, Jean-Marc, Tofik was there, and many friends from Turkey. They came to Bridges, and then we went all over the world. Actually, we did the conference in Canada, in London University. We did the conference in the University of uh, Granada, Spain, and, uh, which is the home of Alhambra. And then we did uh, the conference in San Sebastian, Spain, Hungary, and at Towson University, which is now my university. Last year, we were in Enschede. 
in Schede, uh, in Holland, that uh, um, I was lucky that uh, actually I met Hossein uh, uh, Shen there. He came there and thank you. And he came for a day to be in the uh, conference. Anyway, Bridges Conference, uh, in fact, is a kind of expansion of uh, uh, Islamic art plus other arts which are related to mathematics. So visual art, music, uh, performing art, and people are coming from all over the world, from Japan with origami, from Islamic world, and then it's amazing that people come with idea of origami with Islamic art pattern. And so uh, uh, people uh, come with fractal, with many, many uh, 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 ideas about the uh, connection between mathematics and art. And uh, this is nice, this is one picture of, after a talk of one of the presenters, uh, in the middle is Brent Collins, who is a, what, uh, he makes big uh, sculpture. He's very famous in making form there in US. So uh, all around these people, there's, it was in a kind of a stage, he actually was talking about the blueprint of what he presented as one statue, and people around him, if you go around, you see people are from computer science, artists, painters, uh, mathematicians, uh, uh, poets, and uh, so everybody is now listening to his talk about the structure. The image was very interesting to me, in a way that I said that, okay, I should see this image sometime, somewhere in my life, I don't know where, like uh, deja vu, they call it. Anyway, I was looking at this painting uh, one time. This is a very famous of painting of about School of Athens that done by Raphael. It's very interesting about this painting that in Renaissance time in Italy, uh, the middle one is Leonardo and talking about uh, the, the face is Leonardo, but the character is Plato or Aflatun that we call it. Next to him is uh, uh, Aristotle that we call him Arastu. So Plato is talking about the ideas in the sky and Arastu is talking about finding, like experimenting uh, uh, what, the earth to understand the sense, using sense to understand the world. Here in the left you see Pythagoras. In English, they call it Pythagoras, and then you see Olidos or Euclid. Somehow, they are very familiar to us. In fact, in this painting, uh, Ibn Arabi is, uh, in Andalusia, who was a philosopher, is painted in this painting. So Raphael was showing the connection between Greek culture and Islamic culture, and then the culture of Renaissance time that was very, very influenced but by what was found uh, in Baghdad and later in Bukhara and so on. So in this picture, I was looking at this image, I just noticed this corner that Euclid was talking to a group of people and, uh, and then I realized, oh, exactly, this is what's happening. Right now, we are experiencing the same thing, bringing people from different disciplines to talk about humankind, to find about what we don't know. If we don't get together, we don't understand what others have done, we may become uh, uh, a kind of wrong understanding of what we are doing. It is good to be together and from different disciplines and find ways to understand the reality. Okay, so uh, in Bridges Conference we had, you know that, uh, you know that uh, the cube in, that, that's, uh, in the hand of that guy. That guy is Rubik. Erno Rubik came to Bridges Conference and presented. That guy is a Fields Medal winner who passed away, Bill Thurston. The guy here, uh, Palash Gordesh, is a person who knows a lot of uh, designs in Africa. He, in fact, he had about 150 PhD students under his advice. We had also John Cromwell Matter, who was uh, the Nobel Prize winner as a speaker in 2012. Just uh, a few months ago, we had uh, Harold Walter Croto. He uh, actually 
uh, was the Nobel Prize winner in chemistry who discovered uh, C20, uh, uh, C20 carbon, that, uh, because of that he got a Nobel Prize. Then he realized that how much symmetry is, uh, what exists in such a carbon, which is very, very similar to many, many patterns in Islamic world. You know, so you see that how beautifully this symmetry plays not only in, uh, like in the hands of craftsmen and artists of certain century, but also in biology, in chemistry, and so on. So they, these are the people who came to Bridges, and actually uh, during Bridges we have film festival, and we have theater, and we have like many, many different programs. Even we have people who are interested in mime and mathematics and do performance in a connection between mime and mathematics, and dance and mathematics, and poetry and mathematics, and then family day, and many other things uh, like music and mathematics. He's a, uh, a professor in Princeton University in music department who actually is working in geometry and uh, music. Uh, uh, so, uh, this coming year, Bridges Conference will be in Korea, and it is amazing that just yesterday, when I was walking there in the street uh, by Blue Mosque, I noticed lots of boots with lots of Korean people. I said, what's going on? And they said that now we have a kind of intercultural program, Korea and uh, Turkey. That just happened yesterday. And I said, oh, amazing, because now we have a conference in what? A conference in Korea. So I would like to invite all of you, please, to consider to come to Korea if you want, and in order to see many, many patterns and designs that are in common. It is amazing, because uh, what we have right now in Islamic world, some of them also have been uh, influenced and also have influenced other cultures in uh, China and Korea and Japan, uh, Japan as well. So, uh, anyway, now talking about surviving document, what we have left from the old time. Uh, there are not a lot, but what I try to do to make a small list of them. The first that I should mention that is specifically talking about cutting and pasting uh, of pieces and constructing shapes without exactly referring to the ornaments is a, a small book written by Buzjani, Abul Wafa Buzjani. The other one is an attachment to one of the translation of Abul Wafa Buzjani that I talk about that the name is interlocks of similar or complementary figures that also Jay Bonner mentioned about that. And then the top copy scroll that most of you should know, Tashkent scrolls, and then Mirza Akbar collection of 18th to 19th centuries held at Victoria and Albert Museum. I show some of those to you. And then there is a book which is, even though it's a recent book, like has been published maybe 20 years ago. The person who actually uh, uh, did the book was a craftsman, one of the last craftsmen existed in this world of doing Islamic art. He passed away about many years ago. And the book, uh, actually, his students actually put the images and his uh, teaching of those uh, constructions, put it in a book of five volumes. And it is like rare, it is published by the Museum of Reza Abbasi in Iran and has not been published again. And some people have these five volumes. One of those is me. And, uh, uh, and then, okay. Now go back to Abul Bafa Buzjani. It is good to know some of these faces that who were the people, mathematicians, because when we, we say, okay, mathematicians this, uh, during those times did this or did that, and we don't know who were there, at least we know one who clearly were actually, uh, uh, who, who was there working with craftsmen. Buzjani actually was born in uh, Buzjan, near Nishabur, Khorasan. That is the place that lots of interactions of patterns and design is happening during his time. As actually uh, uh, Jay also mentioned, 
that is the time that in the east we have Samanie, Samanian, Samanit, and in the west we have Alebuye, Dialame, Dialamit. So uh, uh, Dialame actually uh, were uh, the patron of Baghdad. That time the Abbasid was on the rule of them. And so uh, Buzjani was raised and studied mathematics with his uncle and his father. And exactly like today, when a good student from Turkey get a scholarship from MIT and goes there, he got a good scholarship from Baghdad. Baghdad that time was Beitul Hakim, the place that all the books were gathered. And uh, I should say that, give a kind of short history, actually uh, go back to Greek's time, you know, uh, uh, the city of Alexandria and the library of Alexandria was the, uh, one of the main sources of philosophy, mathematics, physics, biology, and so on. After the collapse of uh, uh, Alexandria, library of Alexandria, to the hands of uh, Christian, fundamentalist Christian, who were upset about this kind of teaching, Actually, the people moved those books of Plato and Socrates because they were against all of those books of knowledge. They moved those books to the east. They came to Istanbul. Actually, at that time, they could save books in many parts of Istanbul and then in Mesopotamia. And then later, actually, when Baghdad, actually, Samira was the capital of Bani Abbas, Abbasid. And then after building or making the Baghdad as a city of education. Baghdad, in fact, has two parts of Bak and Dot. So uh, the name is Persian name. Bak means God and Dot means given, given God. Some people say that also it could be Baghdad. Baghdad, Bak means garden and Dot means justice, the garden of justice. And so uh, uh, anyway, so that is the place that actually they bring all the books and they start translating all the works of Greek language to Arabic. And then Buzjani, that time, become the head of the library, the person who is involved. In fact, he and Abu Rehan Biruni, who is just the other side of the world of Islamic world, they are in uh, Samarkand. They calculate the distance between Samarkand and Baghdad with the idea of the earth is a sphere. That is much 400 years before Galileo, Galileo to be punished by saying that the earth is not flat. So anyway, so uh, this is a kind of older image. I think it's saved also in some library here in Istanbul, but the, the poet is in Persian showing that this turban on the hat, head is nothing but showing that they are uh, physicists, chemists, professors, and in fact, you see that the sphere just in front of them and so on. <coughs> anyway, so uh, it is nice to hear uh, from the what, uh, from Buzjani himself in his book what he says about the time that he was living in Baghdad. He says that this is from his book. At some sessions, mathematicians gave instruction on certain principles and practices of geometry. At others, they worked on geometry constructions of two and three dimensional ornamental patterns or gave advice on the application of geometry to architectural construction. So, so people, during his time, mathematicians and craftsmen used to sit together and work together. In fact, he says that the artist presented several methods of cutting and assembling of three squares into one. This is one example that he shows us. He says that artists tried to show three pieces of you know, like three squares and then how we can cut and paste it to make it a bigger square. We show one of these incorrect constructions here. All of them are Buzjani word. This is not nothing my word. Along with Buzjani's construction, okay. Uh, and then some of the artists locate one of these squares in there. So I explain this one when I show you the pattern. In fact, if you want to read more about that, there is an article by Osdoral, 
he was uh, what a Turkish author that unfortunately passed away a few years ago. So, however, you can find his article. So uh, uh, it is nice to know that the book that Buzjani created originally was in Arabic because that time he was not the person who sit down and write. His students, one of them, for example, sit down and write on behalf of him, and he was lecturing, and it was in Arabic because that was the language, the, well, the formal language of knowledge that time in this part of the world. And one of the best copy is a book that was saved in the school of Olokbek, Olokbek Madrasa, and in Olokbek Library. And uh, who was Olokbek? It is interesting that Olokbek was the king in Samarkand. And during his time, he gathered lots of mathematicians and artists together to build and uh, construct uh, things. Uh, including Al Kashi, which was one of the best mathematicians of his time, and then uh, also he made the biggest observatory there. That 70 people were working, 70 scientists in that place. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, he was blinded and killed by his own son, who was thirsty of getting power. And anyway. It is amazing to know that this book that is very original and very unique, it is in Hagia Sophia Library. It's just next to you. How many of you have seen the book there in that library? Sorry, nobody. Oh, so sad. Okay, so uh, let me show you how you can divide three using three squares to make a bigger square. Booz Johnny says that that is the work of artists. They divide one in half, and then that one in three pieces, and one in the middle. We put BM in the middle, and then I left there, I left there, and then the other pieces there. Oh, we are done. Craftsmen are happy that they did it. But Booz Johnny says, this is wrong, because if you have a unit as a square, then the diagonal becomes irrational number, square root of two. However, if you put it that way, you go to see that the diagonal is irrational, I left there irrational. However, if you use the other side, that is one plus half. So from, so that line, I don't know how to show it, but let's try it. Should push something here? Oh, it's too bright. Oh, oh, it's, yeah, too bright. Okay, he shows that those two, one of them is rational, the other irrational. Mathematically, then, it is impossible. Actually, then he talks about how mathematicians did it. He shows that mathematicians in that meeting did it in a way that was not applicable. So what's the benefit? He says that, okay, if we make a square in a... Well, the diagonal become square root of two, then we can construct a rectangle to make a diagonal of a square of three, and square of three can make a square that is three, uh, is like the area is three squares. But this answer doesn't help a craftsman. Then he comes with his own solution. He, he comes up with his solution, how we cut and paste together in order to come up with the idea of making uh, what, one big square out of three squares. Which is, as you can see, this form, as soon as you see this form, you see how beautifully those curves in some of the constructions that Jay Bonner was talking about how form of moving and rotating is possible. And in fact, there are uh, images that is like, like something like that, that you can find directly in uh, many, many doors and uh, uh, Islamic uh, structures with the name of Abu Wafa. This is from his book. This is from the book that, uh, as I said, that there is one very nice uh, uh, Arabic uh, what, language uh, book of Buzjani in uh, Hagia Sophia library. And there is one translation of it in Persian, which is kept in uh, Paris. There are other uh, language translations, but the one which is in uh, Paris is very famous because attached to it is a kind of as appendant. There is one a small booklet 
that talks about how to construct gray or how to construct pattern, Islamic pattern. This is the only book in this world that from those times that talk about how to construct this. So uh, uh, this is uh, from Golru Najib Oglu, if you have chance to take a look at her book, the book of uh, to copy a scroll. She says that it is important to realize that interlocks, this appendant, is the only known practical manual that provides how-to instructions for drawing two-dimensional Greek patterns. Even though some of those instructions are difficult to follow, but if you know the idea and you, if, if you spend time and if you are a Farsi language person, you should come up with the idea anyway. So I tried and now there are two opinions. Oz, Oz Dural says that the person is not known, the person who wrote the book. But there is a, what, a person in Iran, Jazbi, that says that the writer of that notebook is Kubnani. Kubnani was a mathematician of 14th, 15th century in Persia. So this is uh, some of the pages of the book. You realize how difficult it is even for a person today uh, knowing Farsi to read because those writings are so difficult to read anyway. And you see many, many of those Gereh that we were talking today that you have seen uh, are shown here, especially the one that also Jay Bonner showed. And I'll show you how that is possible using the same method that presented in that book. Okay, now another survival document is top copy scroll. This top copy scroll, of course, it is in what? Top copy palace. When you go there to visit Top Copy Palace, they don't show you this to you. It is hidden somewhere. And so I would like to ask if Mr. Shen can make a kind of possibility that everybody can go and see this very unique piece of history. You know, at least we can see the piece, okay? And since he did the conference, such a beautiful conference, definitely has power to do that, right? Okay, so uh, this book actually, uh, is done by Golru Najiboglu, and it is really important for whoever who want to do uh, study in Islamic pattern to know about this book and to read this book because this is not only about top copy scroll. In fact, that is a kind of excuse to uh, start talking about the whole construction patterns and the history behind all of those from the time of uh, much before uh, even uh, uh, like during Bani Omayyeh, as uh, 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 Jay mentioned, and then after the collapse of Bani Omayyeh and moving to uh, about Andalusia and then Andalus and then Bani Abbas and then Samera and then Baghdad and at the same time Damascus. So this is the book takes you many, many different places and gives you many, many documents to understand the whole picture. But in the end, the book shows you many nice images in uh, top copy scroll. In fact, this is what Jay showed, and I rendered this one to make it more obvious for people to see two things there. One, the big red ones show that the tile of like uh, uh, made from those red ones are very similar to those tiles in a smaller size. So he calls it two level, uh, I call it self-similar, he also uses self-similar, actually. I uh, use uh, this idea of self-similarity in an article in 1999 and uh, in another design. So, uh, so you can find self-similarity as a repeating pattern in uh, Islamic art, but more than that, uh, those uh, dotted line or dashed line show you another tile, a group of tiles that uh, actually Jay went through to actually separate them and made a system of that. But in few years after Jay, actually another person add lines to those to make a set of uh, that that's paper, Peter Lou. This is kind of controversial whether we should give credit to whom exactly Emil, uh, Emil 
uh, Makovsky was one of the first, you know, and then uh, Jay Bonner. In fact, uh, the paper that he published in Bridges is the most read paper in 2003 because of the paper that was published by Peter Lu in 2007 about quasi-crystal. So somehow it was fortunate and unfortunate. Um, fortunate because all of the sudden lots of magazines and reporters in the world after 2007 paid attention to Islamic art and quasi-crystal. It was not like that before because science magazine is so famous. Unfortunately, some people say that still we did not receive enough credit for what we have done in the past. And it is true, the world is like that. But the point is, you are very glad that something like this happened, that lots of people paid attention to beautiful mathematics, which is hidden inside of many, many, many uh, about the Islamic art patterns. So, uh, this is like making decagon and those from those. And in fact, this is what uh, people showed, uh, Jay Bonner showed, and I think also Eric, I don't remember. But if you see the pattern there, this is just in Morocco, which is in Iran. And the pattern that uh, is exactly what you see that top copy scroll. And uh, this is just in front of your eye. And then also the same pattern is in this tiling and with the same structure and uh, I have a talk for tomorrow in uh, about the center of art and design to talk about those specific tiles and different ways that can be used in order to make patterns and this is like uh, this is like uh, I covered this beautiful star which is very famous in architecture uh, in Islamic art using those patterns, using those uh, tiles and then show that many, many different types can be constructed exactly from the same tiles. And I, I can prove that we can do infinite number of totally different patterns in uh, uh, a, a pentagon or pentagram. That's enough then. Okay. So uh, the Tashkent scroll uh, is another set of scrolls that was discovered and in uh, the city of Bukhara and then Samarkand and then finally ended up to Tashkent and all, which is also a series of uh, scrolls that created by, uh, uh, after like post Taimurid uh, architectures in Bukhara who actually the, uh, all of them somehow are related in uh, somehow in big Khorasan. Khorasan was the popular place uh, for this type of uh, structures and this type of um, uh, craftsmen and, uh, in order to create the scrolls and go all around the uh, what, world, especially uh, presenting. Uh, in fact, I should say that the top copy of scroll it is in top copy, but made by Taimurid uh, architecture of Khorasan again. So this is what Golru uh, Najiboglu says, that somehow all these scrolls show a kind of uh, uh, you know, a case that most of these people who were interested in mathematics and um, patterns, making patterns, basically came from Central Asia and actually expanded to uh, other parts of the world, including uh, Egypt and North Africa. And then Mirza Akbar collection is uh, like a series of, again, scrolls and patterns that uh, this is now 18th, 19th century. Qajariya is in Iran, and Mirza Akbar is one of the last uh, person who is doing this kind of artistic uh, work using uh, uh, Islamic pattern and when he dies his son gives his work to uh, a person uh, who is a uh, <coughs> pardon Clark actually he give uh, his work to this person who was in charge of director of uh, Islamic part of Victoria and Albert Museum and he brings uh, he takes everything to uh, that museum, 
these are like some images. You see that very similar images to what we have in what? In top copy scroll, but it is not as old as top copy scroll. And in fact, in some, some of those images, you see lousy construction. Shows that the person knew what he wanted to do, only he kept a design in order for himself to create it later without any problem. So, let me show you one of these designs. This is the design. You see that pentagram and that design. And I want to show you how this design can be constructed. This is a pentagram and this is a circle. The radius of re uh, circle is, if it is one, the radius of pentagram will be two. So now see how we construct. First, we have a circle. We divide it by 10. Then we connect every other, uh, no, every third point to make a 10 three star polygon. Then we use those lines and finally we come up with this pattern. And then if we put five of them, corner, you see that in the middle, I can find the design which is in that Mirza Akbar design and this is the final result. So, uh, if a person knows for which design, which kind of method should be used, he or she can successfully uh, create most of these uh, patterns. The other one is this gray. This gray was also in Mirza Akbar scroll, and here I show you how that, that can be constructed. You have normally, uh, we start with an angle, right angle, and so because when we make the gray, we can use reflection in order to cover the surface. Now, for that image that I showed you, which was, which was based on decogram, I need to divide this into five equal angles. So, these radials, then what I may do for that design, I pick up a point, arbitrary point, because everything is, will be proportion. So I can pick up one arbitrary point on the first uh, uh, ray, and then make a rectangle, then I start finding the midpoint of the second ray, and then make circle. If you actually do one time, or two times, then you learn to create many, many of those patterns which are available in those scrolls. Then you can color it, put it red, put it blue, put it yellow, put it red, whatever you want to do. Um, but the whole idea is, but now inside I'm using totally different uh, saza tile, the tile that I want to put it inside. Uh, okay, the book that uh, also I mentioned about Maherol Naqsh. Maherol Naqsh was uh, one of the last craftsmen who passed away a few years ago. He was in Iran, in fact, they took him to several conferences. He was a kind of old man by that time, and uh, he couldn't survive beyond, I don't know, 90 some year old, and then he passed away. And uh, Maherol Naqsh uh, means, Maher means a skillful, Al Naqsh means, Naqsh means design. So his last name was the person who is skillful in making design. And pattern. That was his last name. That was the last name of his father and grandfather. And so all of them were in this business, how to make patterns. So the book that they, uh, he created actually includes many, many patterns and designs that actually, in fact, I show you one of them, uh, how he made that one using real what, uh, instrument of compass and strategy. Uh, like, for example, take a look at this design. This is like, again, that pantogram. But now, inside, I'm using totally different uh, saza tile. The tile that I want to put it inside. Uh, in fact, it is self-similar. If you see, again, we have 
small level of pen, um, pentagram inside, but the unique the unit that we have is not exactly the same five tiles that I showed you before. Now he shows us how that can be constructed in his book. Uh, he talks about again dividing by ten and then uh, one of those five wings and then use a kind of mathematics of compass and straight edge continuously to come up with uh, all of them uh, are calculated so I used his method step by step took time it is not like immediate you jump and then you get it no it takes time that you should read see how he divide and then order how to continue to come up with the pattern and finally this is his pentagram as you can see now this pentagram is totally different from all those set of pentagrams that i showed you because the, the tiles here are different from that but all of them have the same idea of each corner should be a, the center of a part of decagram and one decagram should be in the middle. This is like a requirement of all those pentagrams that have been created. Anyway, uh, coming back to Boots Johnny, Boots Johnny actually has done several things in his book. One to mention is about using rusty compass to construct things. What is rusty compass? You know, the compass that we use today, we can open and close and make many different uh, circles with different uh, what, radius. The idea is now, if we fixed the compass and do not change the size of its radius, can we create all patterns and designs if we use free Compass? No, it is not, because definitely you cannot. But for certain works, you may be able to construct some of the shapes. One interesting shape is, of course, Pentagon. So in his book, he shows us how he used a rusty compass to construct a Pentagon. In fact, this is a kind of a joy of mathematician who does this kind of things to show his ability of understanding how to make pattern. And I should say that exactly Leonardo da Vinci in Renaissance time actually start doing this. Dorer is doing the same. Actually, they become so fascinated about Rossi compass that they do these things. And <coughs> the problem of Renaissance time is uh, today, if I want to write a paper, I should clearly mention where I got this idea or that idea. I should give a reference to the person who first presented this idea. During those times, nobody cared, you know, so I could read a book of, like, a translation of one of the older books of one person in Tunisia and then read it and then say it to this. And from tomorrow, everybody think that that is my idea. This is what has happened to Leonardo da Vinci. The book of da Vin uh, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers now are famous and golden cut and all. Fibonacci numbers was uh, uh, this series were presented much before the time of Fibonacci. But Fibonacci. Uh, new Arabic, he was living in Tunisia, his father was Italian, but he was working in the costume, so he started studying mathematics in Arabic schools, and then he came up with the idea of Arabic numbers, and then all this. He translated this to Italian. Now we give all credit of Fibonacci numbers to Fibonacci. That was not the case. Anyway, so uh, now take a look at this uh, Rossi compass. This is Buzjani Rossi Compass. I show you how he has done it. Slowly, using a Rossi Compass, he's going to make a pentagon. I don't need to explain because it takes hours and you, you are not willing to listen to me. So you better only watch and believe me that is true. Okay. So uh, what I did, I was fascinated by his uh, construction. I used that uh, uh, pentagram that we have in the background and made a model and then later uh, made it a, 
a kind of artwork. Now, this is hanged in my university in Towson. Uh, and underneath of it is like the Booz Johnny construction of pen, um, uh, Pentagon using Rossi compass. The other uh, interesting thing that he did was making uh, approximation of haptagon. Haptagon mathematically is not possible. Mathematically, you cannot construct haptagon or five side. Uh, regular polygon using compass and strategy. Mathematically, it is impossible. Later, Gauss, as one of the biggest mathematicians in the world, in 19th century proved that mathematically, mathematically you cannot do that. And, but Booz Johnny did a great job of finding a kind of approximation for it. I should show it to you how he did it. He started with a side AB, he constructed steps to come up with heptagon. I did the same job and then here that star that you see is a kind of heptagonal star and then what I did I used that star and put the word Abu uh, Buzjani all over because I, I felt mathematicians deserve to be respected somehow. Nobody put the name of me all around the star, so I put the name of Booz Johnny there. And people don't know what is written, but it's, it's repaired, repeats the name of Booz Johnny. And this is his construction of heptagon. And also, this is an, an image which is in my university in the uh, US. Okay, and... Uh, one beautiful idea that also Buzjani introduces in his book is how we can tessellate a sphere. By tessellation, you know that when we say tessellation in plane, as Jay mentioned, for regular tessellation, we have three choices of triangle, square, and uh, hexagon. But what about if we want to... Uh, uh, what, um, tessellate the sphere using regular polygons. We don't have these three. In fact, we have the first one, second one, we don't have hexagonal tessellation. In fact, it can be proved that only there are five type of tessellations on sphere. And in fact, we can prove that mathematically those five are the same as five platonic solid or aflatoon, uh, uh, I, I don't know what we use in, uh, uh, in Arabic, but uh, uh, aflatoon solid, meaning that those that uh, five sides are uh, all sides congruent and all of the sides are regular uh, polygons. In fact, aflatoon or Plato did, did not discover them, but this is after his name. Anyway, so these are those five. The first one is tetrahedron that uh, has all sides are equilateral triangle and uh, three equilateral triangles come to make a vertex. In each vertex point, three of them come together. Then you have hexahedron that we call it cube. You see that three faces come to make a vertex. Then you have octahedron in each Vertex, you have four copies of uh, equilateral triangles. Then we have dodecahedron that in each vertex we have three pentagons. Icosahedron, we have six copies of equilateral triangles in each, I'm sorry, five copies of equilateral triangle in each vertex. So we have five of them. What is the benefit of doing this in a sphere? In fact, as soon as you think about that, you come up with the idea that definitely <coughs> Booz Johnny and people around him were thinking about making domes. So how we can make patterns and designs on dome? So to make pattern and design on dome, they should know how to divide a uh, sphere using <coughs> what, uh, tools which are available to them those time. So uh, he has started talking about this problem beautifully. And he talks about how to 
to tile a sphere using eight equilateral triangles. Uh, that is easy. <clears throat> this is like you have a watermelon. You cut it just in the middle, and then cut it this way, and then this way. So you have eight, eight equal. This is easy. So this is, however, to write it down in paper, he needed to actually come up with a kind of a way of presenting three-dimensional objects in two-dimensional surface. This is his job. It's very, very beautiful. Yeah, if you know mathematics, you see that this is a very good way of presenting three-dimensional object using two-dimensional pattern. <coughs> then, uh, actually, I, I showed to you how this, so if we have two cuts, then we have three cuts, then each of those, like A, F, D, will be one face, and then we have eight of those faces. <coughs> Sorry. Then he talks about tiling with four equilateral triangles, which is tetrahedron. This kind of explanation, we don't want to be bothered by that. But he shows that if we pick up the center of each of those equilateral triangles and connect to the other centers, we can create that one as well. This is, uh, I'm showing you in a kind of sphere that this happening, that blue shows you the triangle of uh, uh, octahedron, and then the center, the red one, if you connect to the others, you can create uh, a tetrahedron. And then he talks, uh, in fact, the way that he introduces the idea, you, uh, immediately you see the relationship between these objects that we call it dual. Like, you know, if you have cube, if you find the center of each of those and connect, you can make octahedron inside of it and vice versa. For dodecahedron and uh, icosahedron, you do the same. They are dual of each other. And on and on, I would like to actually because this is like more mathematics that uh, is necessary, but I'm, I'm going to show you only uh, a few images that how he came up with the idea. The same uh, idea, actually, in, in his note, he talks about how to make icosahedron, and this is wrong. Unfortunately, uh, the way that is presented in that notebook uh, is wrong. Uh, let me tell you that this is the way that he does it. He actually uh, says that we make the first uh, wow, the big circle, great circle. And then uh, he says that how we construct those equilateral triangles. Unfortunately, when we do that, we notice that based on his construction, uh, the shape is not regular icosahedron. Webke, who was a person who actually introduced his book to the West, uh, shows what is the problem. To me, I feel that this part has been added to his book by his students because definitely he knew that that is not right correction, uh, right method. Because later he talks about how to make dodecahedron. This is the way. See that red triangle is bigger than blue triangle. However, he talks about how to make dodecahedron, which is much, much more complicated and much more sophisticated. And based on the, but his construction, if we do the job, we see the job is perfect. So perhaps we should say that one of his students, because he had a few students around him to write down his book, added that part. And if not, I think, Booz Johnny could catch the problem. Anyway, he also go through and talk about many uh, uh, other constructions that we call it Archimedean solids. And some of those Archimedean solids are the basis of what we see all those patterns and moharness in uh, what Islamic world. And it is great to actually appreciate some mathematicians who have done a lot in many years before uh, for what 
is now uh, we are very familiar and we appreciate the art of geometry in Islamic world. Anyway, I would like to invite you to uh, Bridges Conference if you wish to come. And actually, uh, the conference is in Seoul, Korea. There is a short movie there. I don't know if uh, we have time to watch it. This is like two, three minutes. Hossein, you were? Okay. So uh, uh, I stop right now and thank you very much for your time.